the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We sing glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. One more time. We sing glory to God. Shaba la kusa wani diva la kusa. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. Sing it from the depth of your heart. I love you forever. I love you. Forever, be lifted. Forever, be lifted. Forever, Lord, in and through my life, be lifted. Be lifted. Forever, be lifted. Forever, be lifted. Hey, Bashala Barodas. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna, forever. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. We worship, we worship, we worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. One more time, Hosanna to your name. Father, we're only here tonight because of your grace. We're here tonight because you are God, the King of all kings, the Lord of lords. We bow our hearts to worship you and to declare how much we love you. We have come tonight for a very definite encounter in your presence the bible declares that they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the lord in zion therefore we pray that the hallowed bread be broken tonight cause our eyes to see cause our ears to hear let the sick be healed let the oppressed be delivered let the lost be found in the name of Jesus. Let light come from your throne and bring brightness and perspective to every area of darkness. Empower us by the ministry of your word. Let the results show. In Jesus' name, I pray. God bless you. Good evening, everyone. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. There is what you only get in the house of the Lord. You cannot get it in a bank. 
You cannot get it in an academic institution. You cannot get it in a hospital. It is only the presence of God that can bring the fullness of joy, pleasures even forevermore. Let me encourage us, therefore, to be and remain intentional. You must be very intentional as far as coming to the house of God is concerned. And then number two, opening up your spirit. See, you can be here and yet you are not here. Is that true? The Bible spoke about Mary and Martha, a contrast of two different people in the presence of Jesus. One sat quietly and she was listening. The other was around where things were happening, but it did not bless her. And she was offended. Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and offended about many things. He said, one thing is needful, and that Mary has chosen to sit at the master's feet. When it was time to eat bread, he said, tell the people to sit down. If you cannot sit down, there's no bread for you. Sit down means pay attention. Be undistracted. Forget about whatever challenge, whatever it is. Anything the presence of God cannot solve cannot be solved. Are we together? Let me give you a guarantee, and I say this with every sense of humility and responsibility. And I've been saying this for many years. If you pay attention to the truths that I teach you, if you pay attention to these mysteries of the kingdom that the Lord brings to you week in, week out, I give you a guarantee as touching the integrity of the name of the Lord, your life will be an unending ending wonder first to you and then to all around you the things that we teach are not personal inventions we found them it is an ancient part it was not discovered by us no it's been there god by his grace granted us access to these things paul calls it the fellowship of the mystery are we together it will be dangerous it will even be evil to teach you opinions i think this is how it should be i suggest this is how it should be the truths that you hear and learn have been vetted by the integrity of scripture and then the life of people with uncommon results I made a covenant with God that I will never lead a people who would live defeated lives as though the realities of truth that we find in scripture were a lie. It is God's desire that in this order that you know him, this is eternal life, John 17 and verse 3, remember, that they may know you, the one true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. That's eternal life. Then number two, to be equipped with the principles second to knowing God is spiritual enlightenment where you are equipped with the principles that make for a victorious life please listen believers a victorious life is not a wish a victorious life is more than a desire are we together it takes knowledge the administration of the life and the power of God in this kingdom is knowledge dependent. You need sufficient knowledge to thrive and to reign. Having knowledge is not enough. It must be knowledge enough to swallow up darkness. When a student fails an examination in most schools and most colleges, pass what we call a pass mark starts from say 40 or 45 pending on the standard now if say the pass mark is 45 percent if a student scores 40 percent he didn't get zero but he still failed is that true the person who did not write that exam the person who did not even come for the exam and the one who failed the exam will stay in the same category 
this is the terrible thing about life so if you are going for this thing it is best to go all out so that you do not have the result of an unbeliever the result of a frustrated christian make up your mind he's called it our season of marvelous light make up your mind some of you here are ministers of the gospel some of you here are business people it doesn't matter what field of endeavor make up your mind to fight ignorance every time you come here and every time you connect by way of uh, the, the internet or whatever television station you are opening up your heart as a communication of your desperation to end ignorance are we together they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness do you know many believers know what they want but they do not know what it takes to actualize what they want this is the assignment of the teaching priest hallelujah I know that I want a victorious life. I know that I want a good home. I know that I want good children. I know that I want an excelling life. But do you know what it takes to turn your desire to your experience? We have agreed in this house and let me emphasize again that results matter. Please prophesy to yourself. Say results. Yes, sir you will live a very defeated christian life if you downplay results in fact i give you a guarantee that your christian experience would be a frustrating one if you your life cannot capture sufficient results it is in your results that jesus is glorified hallelujah one of the ways we lift up jesus is that our lives command dimensions of results that dumbfound principalities and powers jesus wants the church to manifest the fullness of his glory please give us ephesians chapter 3 we'll read from verse 9 and 10 my verse of emphasis is verse 10 i'm just i'm just preparing your heart it says and to make men see what is the fellowship of the mystery paul is speaking now which from the beginning of the world had been hid in god who created all things by jesus christ 10 let's read together ready one to read to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by who the church the manifold wisdom of god so the entire the entire engracing that was given to apostle paul he's teaching the church in ephesus now that the reason why god so lavishly subjected me through this this rigorous spiritual training and granted me access to revelation is to bring you to this point that from your life and through your life there would be a display of such excellence your life becomes a living epistle you know what it means a living epistle means you become a continuation of everything written in scripture that means if someone forgets his bible at home he does not cry again when he sees you you become a continuation of what he was reading whatever he did not understand in his devotion in the morning your life becomes an explanation of it if he were studying about the favor of God and he didn't understand because of the context, the culture that was used, God will use you. He will personify and say, in addition to what you read, look at this life. If the person studies that God is all powerful, that God is able to deliver and save to the uttermost, you become an explanation, a clarification. To everything that scripture says this is why jesus was called the logos of god the thoughts of god whatever god was thinking jesus was acting out are we together it gives god great glory for the saints to access light shout light one more time say light high level spiritual illumination let me tell you the truth nothing empowers like light 
but the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light god made many lights but there were two great lights that sustained the ability to exert dominion the bible says the first light was to rule in the day the second light was to rule in the night do you have that light if you do not have that light you cannot rule in the day if you do not have the one that rules in the night you cannot rule in the night please every time you come to the house of God the main auditorium here all the overflows outside and those following I want you to participate in everything that happens in the house of God most believers are careless about the entire time they spend in the presence of God they are distracted others come and they are having all kinds of business discussions while fire is coming from the altar other people are victims of slumber are we together other people are there but they are not there and what you are looking for is what God is answering and you see the way the way Satan works is that the moment the word is coming the word that gives you illumination he will distract you are we together now it says how shall we escape if we neglect carelessness so great a salvation apostle i love jesus but my problem is this money thing i don't know why the thing is not answering come to the house of god he can open you up and give you an understanding apostle mine i'm in ministry but it's not working the doors have refused to open apostle mine is i quarrel with my wife every day if we don't quarrel in 24 hours it means one person was not around come to the house of god are we together yes sir apostle i'm tired of my children my school fees is being their school fees is being increased and they're coming with results that are, 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 are very discouraging come to the house of god you've gotten a lesson teacher for them it did not work come to the house of god listen i'm not teaching laziness but the house of god is a supernatural place the house of god is not a place of convergence uh, where people it's, it's not just a diplomatic center there is a difference god is there for in the sanctuary God. that's the difference it's not because a mic is here uh -uh. it's not because a keyboard is there it's not because there's some level of organization and structure happening the difference is the presence of God are we together it will be a total waste of your time if God is not here in fact it will be evil to your destiny if God is not here oh come lay down the burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary hallelujah this is what we get in the house of God do you know a believer should not be two years old listen a, this is my opinion now and I believe it is consistent with scripture no true believer should be at least two years old or let's give it let, in all fairness let's say three years old in a strong functional ministry where the word of god is exalted and the ministry of the holy spirit is exalted and the believer does not have some kind of evidence the evidence of spiritual growth conformity to the character of the christ the evidence of results superior spiritual understanding the evidence of transformation becoming christ-like and becoming a superior version of yourself by by bringing scripture based ideas that replace some of these ideas that lead to a defeated life when you come to the house of God you must know what you are here for number one that you are here for encounters to know Jesus to understand God number two 
to understand yourself you see the true knowledge of god also leads to the revelation of you are we together the more you know god the more you will understand yourself because you are born of god so the more you learn him the more you learn yourself you understand the 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 nature of man. then you are transformed transformation is a real miracle dear people of god more than receiving prophecies more than receiving a miracle more than falling and standing the real miracle most destinies need is transformation and transformation is twofold the first dimension of transformation is a replacing it's called renewal a replacing of old wrong devilish demonic culture driven ideas that do not sustain the power to lead to a victorious life it will take a long time for you to be free from it because it did not come in one day it took you 30 years declaring your loyalty to an old unscriptural idea it's going to take a while for the spirit of god to win that war in your mind that you can finally give up something that is destructive then you come to a new superior life are we together meditate on these things he said give yourself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear unto all honestly god sees my heart that my passion for everyone here and our global family is not just to remain indefinitely loyal to a man of god to a ministry it is that your life will be so superior in quality that your life will be i told you remember the teaching we just finished that your results are evangelists too you are not the only one who should be preaching the gospel your result is a preacher too and that there is a sermon that only your results can preach don't forget it romans chapter 8 when you read from verse 18 and 19 18 starts by saying for i reckon i come to terms with the fact that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed where in us there is a glory that should be revealed in us 19 says for the earnest expectation of create the creature waited for the manifestation not explanation the manifestation of the sons of god challenge yourself enough of excuses enough of flimsy excuses lord i open up my heart i admit i do not know my heart is opened let light come the bible says to receive with meekness colossians 3 16 the engrafted word he says let the word of christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing yourself then i, I can't remember the scripture now that says to receive with meekness the engrafted word it takes the quality of meekness for that word to dwell in you richly do you know what meekness means number one the malleability of heart and then number two the openness of the same and it starts by acknowledging your insufficiency outside of the influence of the world that means i admit that there is something i do not understand about the dynamics of signs and wonders there is something i do not understand about kingdom wealth and prosperity there is something i do not understand about peace there is something i do not understand about whatever it is the moment your heart is open then you are ready for that light to come you don't come to the house of god hoping let me hear uh, okay it looks impressive i think uh, there's some sense in it no the devil is already cheating you when that becomes your mentality you come with your heart opened even jesus at age 12 he was in the temple accessing light even though he was the word are we together please make up your mind every time you find yourself in the house of god everything that happens from the opening prayer 
up to the time where the word comes they are all a coordinated effort to see that your spirit man is opened and that the word of god comes to you because listen to me when the word comes then you can arise it says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you isaiah 60 and verse 1 it says rise to a new light for your light is come so whilst you're seated whilst you're following in one minute i like you to pray a desperate prayer open my eyes oh god open my eyes that i may see open my eyes that i may see open my eyes open my eyes open my eyes open my eyes i need to understand your ways i need to understand your ways the darkness of today's world cannot allow for amateurism your life can go for it lord i need knowledge that puts me in command walking in dominion practically hallelujah one more scripture just came to my spirit um that should be psalms 74 please give us 74 and 20 let's see 74 and 20 have respect unto the covenant why for the dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty in other words lord there is a system of immunity that exempts and exalts the believer he said lord be attentive to it you must understand those precepts why for the dark places of the earth are full of the habitation of cruelty this world without christ does not have mercy the devil will remain unhindered say unto god the bible says psalm 66 and verse 3 how terrible art thou in your ways it says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto you it takes light we're going to start a two-part series tonight i've been very concerned about not only the powerlessness of believers but some of the things that are happening in our world today our nation today as a result of the inability of the saints to produce results you know as a man of god you are you are in touch with what happens around a territory the reason is because whether it is good or bad usually you are about the first to know if it is good people will send it to you as an expression of thanksgiving to join them in sharing their joy if it is bad you'll be the first to know because they hope that by informing you you're the closest expression to god that they know and so they'll inform you in hope that you'll do something about it i have been concerned at the degree to which believers have been communicating their frustrations as far as results in this kingdom is concerned i receive text messages every day with believers asking questions like is this god real is the faith life real apostle i've lived all my life serving god but it looks like there is absolutely nothing and i'm not just talking of young people so you would say okay they are just young people i'm talking of people even elderly people who are saying this is not fair i've spent 50 60 years of my life only loving jesus my life is synonymous to church synonymous to fasting and prayer synonymous to spiritual activities but i cannot seem to have a hold of results that become a consolation to my christian experience and it, you see when you see these kinds of things and people send these kinds of text messages if you love jesus and love people it should touch you it should it, it's like a, a a report card now you see what is happening the shameful idea of ritual killing i'm sure you are you are aware of it where people are already maiming one another as an alternative 
and you will be surprised that if you probe these people deeply most of them may come from christian circles or be affiliated to christian circles the rate at which people are redigging wells of traditional practices the rate at which people are redigging wells of occultism and witchcraft these are things that the church was almost rejoicing that we are triumphing over now satan is manipulating these things and people are returning back to villages and saying look let's dust that file again at least from 1990 to 1995 as a, an idol worshiper these are the things i have to show for my idol worship you asked me to leave it based on a proposition that jesus would give me superior results i've given him 10 15 20 years and there is nothing to show until you can prove otherwise i am going back it's easy to stand and criticize people and say don't go back to this don't go back to that people are not stupid in the height of desperation they will do anything that works are we together yeah there are many workers in church and i don't just mean here church world over whose lives continue to be a representation of pain shame nothing at all seems to be working they are the chief recipients of prophetic words and it looks like just nothing is happening what then is the problem is it that god lied or is it that scripture truth cannot come from scripture what is what is this that is responsible for for instance look at the poverty the the the, the financial decadence people continue to go down and it is not some of these things may be attributed to laziness lack of productivity but i have seen people who are commendably diligent and yet it looks like it's the same situation there has to be an explanation hmm. are we together yeah and sometimes you see when people come with this kind of pain and burden as ministers of the gospel sometimes we make that mistake of just sweeping these things under the carpet as if just forget about it it's not an issue and the person is says it's not an issue my children are dying my family is in shambles my entire life does not have any representation of the excellence and the glory of god now i'm coming to church to find meaning and explanation as to why these things are happening because the church is the correct place to come and find explanations we've done our best to hear what the government has to tell us We've done our best to hear what politicians have to tell us. We've done our best to hear what the business world has to tell us. We've done our best to hear what, you know, intelligent people, the academia has to tell us. We have to come and listen to what Jesus has to say. Are we blessed? So I'm teaching tonight on a two-part series. We'll start tonight and we'll end commanding the supernatural. I want you to pay attention pay attention to what you are learning because it holds a powerful key this will be part one and then we'll finish up tomorrow you know I, I want you to pray for me and let's pray that God will grant us grace because there is a backlog there is a course curriculum we are growing intentionally and because um of the limitations on our times of contact there is so much to learn we have to pray that god will grant us grace and continue to direct us on how to get these truths to believers so that we be strengthened so that we be established because our lives and destinies for some of us spiritually financially we're in icu is that true when if someone is in icu and the doctor is chewing gum singing praises and wondering if it's your loved one what will you tell the doctor are we together someone is in icu and there is no sense of urgency whatsoever no. a good doctor will be up and doing thinking planning doing everything that he or she can do that's that's the kind of urgency that i have in my spirit we shouldn't wait until september october november 
then we just say thank god in all things mm -mm. this is a year of marvelous light by september october you should stand with your results as witnesses around your lives and this will be your testimony in the name of jesus christ Yeshua. Hallelujah. Mm. Matthew chapter 8 from verse 25. Skama shalakuzia tabalakuzia da. The disciples came to Jesus. This was when they were crossing to the other side. And I woke him saying, Lord, save us. We perish. We're reading to 27. And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was great calm. Let's read verse 27 together. One to read. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this? that even the winds and the sea obey him. May that be said about you. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. In John chapter 15 and verse 8, John chapter 15 and verse 8, Jesus Christ himself was teaching and he said, Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, that ye bear much fruit. He says, so shall ye be my disciples. In fact, go to verse 16. 16 of the same chapter. Here's what Jesus had to say again. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. You know what ordained means? Ordained means to legitimize your operation. Is that true? I have ordained you that you should go and do what? Not bring back stories. No, when he sent you, you don't go and come back with stories. You should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. Our God is a supernatural God. This God that we serve is a supernatural God. The faith life is a supernatural life in jeremiah jeremiah 32 jeremiah 32 and verse 17 jeremiah 32 and verse 17 here's what it says our lord god it says behold thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm and there is nothing too hard for thee the God that we serve is almighty. He's not just mighty. He is almighty. El Shaddai, the multi-breasted one. Are we together now? The God of heaven. The faith life is a supernatural life. God himself is the supernatural God. And we came out of God. And even in redemption, we are products of the mercy the blood and the cleansing of that supernatural god the entire activity of redemption and salvation was supernatural dying and going to head is the place of the dead collecting the keys and coming back to life without blood ascending to heaven and offering his blood as a ransom a sacrifice returning back without blood a supernatural life the supernatural is not for men of God alone. The supernatural is not for those in the fivefold ministry alone. Our idea, most times believers have an idea of the supernatural to mean if you are getting into ministry, fivefold ministry they mean, then you can be open to the supernatural. And you ask the average believer, give me a picture of your idea about the supernatural they say falling down while that is true that is the least expression of the supernatural it is just the one we're used to seeing 
in many Pentecostals and charismatic circles where people can fall down shout under the anointing with no direct contact usually with the man of god and so that is the closest idea to the supernatural but that, that is far from god's idea of the supernatural god is a supernatural god let me repeat we have been called into a supernatural experience the faith life is a supernatural life and it is in the manifestation of the supernatural listen carefully that jesus is glorified that the saints are exalted and that principalities and powers are the the defeat of principalities and powers become clear to all and sundry when the supernatural comes into play the supernatural refers to any manifestation that is beyond the scope of science any manifestation that seems to defy the law of process in as much as the law of process is part of the kingdom laws but there is a provision to rise above and beyond the limitation that process can bring process is important but that under certain conditions a possibility exists in the economy of god to rise above and beyond the scope of science and the scope of process are we together every time it defies scientific explanation every time it defies the regular course of things then it is supernatural god does not negate the laws of life they are his laws but that there is provision to arise and communicate higher and superior spiritual laws to the end that jesus be revealed and the end that jesus be glorified write this down please the supernatural is an interplay between faith and the anointing write it down please the supernatural is an interplay of or between faith and the anointing that means it is the union the coordinated union of faith and the operation of the anointing that produces the supernatural or the word of god and the spirit of god you have to understand this the word of god and the spirit of god the two principal tools that produce the supernatural so the supernatural is the union of the word of god and the spirit of god or faith and the anointing so here in part one I want to take on the first aspect the dynamics of faith so you can put that under commanding the supernatural part one then in bracket the dynamics of faith listen very carefully i'll show you why many believers are unable to produce results results that are consistent results that last an interplay between your faith in god the workings of God's faith in you and the anointing let's look at the dynamics of faith in Acts chapter 20 and verse 32 for our background very quickly Acts chapter 20 and 32 it says and now brethren I commend you to God and to the word of his grace notice what he commends you to God and then his word and he says it is able to build you up maturity and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified scripture number two first John chapter 5 and verse 4 first John 5 and verse 4 it says for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world whatsoever not just whosoever whatsoever is born of god it sustains within it the ability to overcome the world and it says this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith even 
even our faith most believers know about a concept called faith most believers have heard sermons on faith most believers have read books on faith but i submit to you sincerely that most believers do not understand the dynamics of faith what faith is and how it works you want your life to be extraordinary you want your life to be supernatural you have to understand the dynamics of faith write it down what is faith our fathers have taught us we have read it from scripture we have gleaned upon the wisdom of men and women through history who have demonstrated with proof in their lives that the subject of faith is not just some dogma somewhere it's not just a mere doctrine they have proven it through different circumstances that faith works let me give you two or three definitions of faith are you ready number one faith means absolute confidence in god absolute confidence in god i'll give you three definitions generally speaking faith means absolute confidence in god number two this is a definition i have found useful to me and it has come as a result of my personal study on the subject of faith faith is the name given to the action the action of obedience that you take faith is the name given to the action of obedience that you take based on your conviction faith is the name given to the action of obedience that you take based on your conviction honor of who god is and the integrity of his word the action of obedience that you take based on your conviction on who god is and the integrity of his word is called faith so action of obedience based on conviction of who god is and the integrity of his word dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline